Welcome to Painting with Steve. Today we'll be continuing our series on painting the Kemet monsters. So let's get painting. As you remember from last time, we were uh, priming our Kemet monsters. Well, now we're going to add our first colors to our miniatures. And uh, basically what I do is, in fact, this time I've chosen not to take a look at the pictures of the uh, monsters in the game. I've decided I'm going to paint them anyway. I want to paint them. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to kind of... Actually, that's the way I actually like painting miniatures is kind of being creative as I'm doing it. And what you do is you basically take... You look at your miniature and you say, okay, what's going to be the main color for this miniature? And then you go ahead and pick that color. Um, also, you, you sometimes you notice, like right now, I'm using a much larger brush because uh, the main color for this miniature is quite most of the uh, miniature, actually. So I, it's a little easier to cover better with a larger brush. In this case, this monster, I think, is the sandworm. And I've decided to start out with kind of a sickly yellowish color. Um, and I haven't decided what's going to be the secondary color for it. Might be orange or it might be green, but uh, I kind of like the looks of this sickly yellow color. So let's uh, continue to add uh, paint to this uh, sandworm and then we'll get going on to the next miniature. In this stage, uh, you, while you're trying to be careful not getting paint on the, where the other colors are going to be, your main goal is to make sure you're covering up all the white that uh, is currently showing from the priming. Uh, in the case of a snake-like creature which intertwines among itself, you have to constantly uh, look at the miniature at different angles because when you look on one side, it will look different than the others. So there, we've got the uh, sandworm done, looking pretty good. So let's now move on. And I think I'm gonna next move on to, I think it's the mummy, uh, which is a big giant mummy. Uh, of course, Kemet is a game about battling in ancient Egypt, so it makes sense to get him a mummy. And I think mummies are often got some magical properties to it. So I think I'm gonna paint his lower robe a purple color, this uh, midnight purple. So let's get going on that. As always, you want to make sure you keep your brushes clean because if they dry in with paint, they're not, they're going to get stiff and they're not going to work too well and you're going to have to replace them. I'm also moving on to a smaller brush because uh, it's not quite as big of an area for uh, painting the purple on it. And also I've noticed there he's got a, a sash, which I've decided I want to paint a different contrast color to it. So I want to be careful and not get the purple onto the sash. So let's get going. basic technique that I use when I'm 
painting uh, one color close in detail to another color and I don't want to get on the other color I find actually I start right up against the color I don't the area I don't want to paint and work my way backwards so I find if I work towards it I might accidentally overstroke and hit the color I don't want to uh, paint so there you go you can see this uh, his front little uh, robe or banner whatever you want to call it uh, or castle is still white but he's got a nice purple all around and I, one thing I like about this uh, army uh, painter speed paint it also does a great job of doing highlights and wash at the same time we're now moving on to the scorpion and I think uh, his legs I'm gonna have is a blood red color I was gonna paint the whole model in red but I've decided I'm not gonna do that just gonna do the legs and these were a pain about to do because I'm constantly turning the miniature over looking at a different angle because every time I looked in a different way I saw that part of the leg one of the legs I hadn't painted in white was showing uh, in fact I had to go back over this several times again I'm using a small brush because I got a small area to paint um, but I was kind of happy how it came out so let's finish up the scorpion and of course it is definitely a giant desert scorpion There, I think I finally got all the legs for the scorpion done. There they are. Boy, that was a pain about to do. And I saw I missed a little bit here on my mummy. That often happens to me a lot. So, actually, I'm not doing that. What I was doing while I was painting the red on the scorpion, I thought the mummy sash would look really good as red as contrast to the purple. So, it's been enough time so that purple is dried. So, now I'm just painting a little bit of detail of the red sash. And there you go. I really like how that came out. So, what's next? this very giant snake and I first I'm gonna do he's got his big mouth open so while I've got red out and red on my paintbrush let's paint the inside of his mouth red uh, why not And also while I've got red out, I'm going to also paint the, uh, the head dress for the Sphinx. And I think uh, a red color will make a good contrast. I think the body will be more of a brown sand color. So I'm going to do this red. And it's a little tricky because there's the headdress kind of blurs into the body. So I've got to be real careful not to go over too much. 
In fact, actually, I missed a little spots here or there on the face, so I'm going to have to go back what I call spackling by getting out some white paint and just painting over it. Uh, that's what I found the best way. If you do make a mistake with speed paints, just paint over the mistake area with white paint, let it dry, and then you can paint it over with the right color of speed paint. There, I'm going to put the uh, fix down now because I've noticed I've made some mistakes on his face. I just want to make sure that uh, the red will dry fully before I put the white on because if I just put the white on, I'm going to end up getting pink, which I really don't want the face of the Sphinx to be pink. Now I'm looking at the elephant, the monster that comes in the Kemet game, and I decided that the basically the blanket that uh, go or saddle blanket that goes over the elephant where you got the shooting gallery or platform above I think will look really good as red because I mean the main body of the elephant's going to be gray and red and gray go along pretty well there you are that's looking pretty good uh, one thing you notice at this stage, whenever you put any color on the miniatures, it really pops because, uh, well, it's white otherwise. And speaking of white, let's get some of our uh, white out and let's fix that uh, mistakes we made on the Phoenix. And I also made a few mistakes here. Yep, I didn't even go to the white. I just noticed while I was about to go fix the Phoenix that, yep, I missed some more white spots on the legs of the scorpion. I think I'll end up probably going back there a couple more times. I'll keep, every time I look at it, I see a spot I missed underneath. It's kind of tricky when you're painting miniatures when you got those legs the way they are. We have to get all underneath as well, which is hard to get access to. So here I am kind of do what I call spackling. I'm just putting some white paint right over the areas that I didn't mean they become red. And then when that dries, I can paint over any speed color I want and it will look great. So let's keep on painting. And there we go. There's the Sphinx with his headdress. I'm not happy still yet on how he's looking, but I think with a few more colors, he will stop, start to pop. All right, so our next color we're going to pick is this color here. Uh, and we're going to be painting, I think, I believe, it's going to be this ram. And we're going to use a uh, brown color. I think it's called sand golem color is the brown we're using. So let's continue on. Again, I'm using a small brush because there's a lot of close details, especially around his head and such, or his horns and stuff. That I don't want to get this brown on. And again, it's also a little tricky getting the undersides of the ram and it's the undersides of his legs and such. Got to make sure we don't leave any white. That's one advantage of about priming in white is that it definitely shows up if you don't uh, cover it up with a different color. So let's continue on.
there. That's how our RAM is looking. Not too shabby right now. Alrighty, so what are we going to do next? Starting to get a little tired of painting, so I don't think I'm going to be doing too many more miniatures. Uh, that's one good rule of thumb, is you don't want to continue painting when you're feeling a little fatigued or something, because that's when you're going to get tired. But I'm moving on to this blue color, I believe. And I think I'm going to paint... Um, let's see. Oh yes, this uh, Egyptian beetle. Definitely the top part of him is going to be blue. And actually the body here is a little bit easier to paint than the legs, because you just got to do all both sides of the body. Just got to be careful not to get it on the legs or his big antenna. So let's get painting this. Egyptian Beetle. our Egyptian beetle and I'm really liking how that blue is looking on his shell gives kind of a little bit of a metallic look to him and now I've decided that the god Thor needs a little bit of that blue as well on him it kind of is he's got what is, I would call almost like an apron on him and I'm deciding to paint this blue I think his primary colors are going to be white on him so blue and blue makes a good complementary color for white I found especially for Egyptian figures. So, let's continue on. I'm now heading back to the things here and I'm going to actually add a little bit more white paint to them because I noticed the white paint that I applied before became out kind of pinkish in color. That's because I didn't quite allow enough time for the red underneath to dry fully. But that's easy to fix. Just put another coat of white paint on and then it'll become white. You want to make sure you do that because you try to cover up and some of the underneath is white and some is pink. It's not going to have the same coloring when you put the actual color you want over it as well. And touching up a little bit on the uh, elephant, I noticed I didn't get quite get the sides of the blanket. So that's one thing you're going to find, especially the first colors that you put on a miniature, you're going to be constantly going back and applying areas that you missed. Luckily, that's one thing great about painting miniatures. Uh, you always can add more colors or more paint if you missed an area and you always can paint over an area you don't like and start over again. Painting is very forgiving. decided to paint the uh, basket or shooting platform on the elephant uh, blue color to be contrast with the red uh, and then right now it looks very patriotic because the rest of the elephants all white but when I paint it gray it won't have this idea of looking like a 4th of July elephant but more of a war elephant uh, the tricky part of this one is painting the inside of the basket because I want to get the floor being blue but I'm careful because I got two very small uh, fighters in that basket and I don't want to get blue paint on them because mostly they actually are going to be standard colors but 
There you go. Looking pretty good. I think now, if I remember right, I'm going to move on to the big old snake. Yep, we're now moving on to the snake, which is basically a giant snake with a little tiny rider riding his head. Uh, remember a while ago we painted his mouth red, so now we're going to be painting his scales uh, a green in color. And you notice I've moved back to a larger brush because there's, I'm not so worried about keeping uh, the green away from other areas because there are no other areas. His whole uh, outer body is going to be this orc green in color. Uh, the tricky part is going to be getting all parts of the snake because he's kind of a coil so I have to get both the inside and the outside. Uh, the best technique I've found on using on dragons, serpents, and snakes like this is just fall around on one, out, one edge and go all the way around the snake then go back and do the inside part and then check and see whatever you didn't uh, hit and basically as I call it, meet in the middle with the colors until you've got the entire snake painted. So we'll finish up this snake. So there, now we've got the uh, green uh, snake all painted, and he's looking pretty good. Uh, he looks a little more finished than the other miniatures because almost all of his uh, miniature surface area of white has been painted over now because he's actually a fairly simple miniature. He's all green with a red mouth and uh, teeth, and the detail will come in painting the little rider that's riding on his head. Well, I'm getting pretty tired of painting right now, so I think uh, I'm going to call it. So let's take a look at how our miniature are looking, and then we'll continue on next week by adding more uh, colors. But as for now, happy painting!